It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. I am so excited to talk with my guest today. Joining me is my friend, Jill Conrath. Everybody knows her, speaker, sales expert, and author of multiple best-selling books, Selling to Big Companies, Snap Selling, Agile Selling, and her latest book we're going to talk about today, More Sales, Less Time, Jill Conrath. Welcome to Accelerate. Andy, thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here today. Oh, such a pleasure to have you here. So, in the off chance or someone listening who's never heard of you, take just a quick second, introduce yourself, and maybe tell us how you got your start in sales. Um, I started in sales at Xerox Corporation and, and was cold calling in the streets of St. Paul and literally cold calling in St. Paul yeah, during the winter. <laughs> seven yeah. months a year or 10 <laughs> yeah, months a year, know, it is cold, I right? I know, absolutely. And after that, I moved into technology sales and, um, and then I started selling different kinds of services and then I started my own consultancy. And then finally, after that, I, I um, actually my business collapsed. And I had to rebuild it. And everything I learned, it was the impetus for writing my very first book, Selling to Big Companies. And then since then, my business has been about sharing my knowledge and helping other people. Okay. What you do to a large audience of people. So you've, you've written a new book, which you want to talk about yes. here today, which I highly recommend. I really, as all your books, I really enjoyed reading it and sort of cursing you at the same time because because <laughs> I sent there no I was, well, I was downloading all these you talked on one hand about getting all these apps off your phone and then I sent there you had all these great suggestions for new apps to use oh. <laughs> so I was downloading all these new apps to my phone I'm like on balance I have about the same number of apps on my phone before I started but um, anyway nonetheless uh, I'm anxious to use some of them so um, what was the impetus to write this book I mean it's about product, personal productivity and why Why now? Why this? Well, let me, let me just say that after Snap Selling came out, which is all about selling to crazy busy people, um, I kept hearing from people, oh my God, Jill, this has really been helpful. I mean, it's working, um, but I'm crazy busy too. What do you have for me? And invariably, I'd look at them and go, I, I don't have a clue. I'm swamped as well. And, and so it, this was nagging at me for a number of years. And finally, what happened is I said, literally, I am so sick and tired of being crazy busy all the time. There has got to be a better way that I can run my business, do more sales, and, and do it without working from the moment I get up till, till you know, I shut down in the evening and kind of working nonstop. So mm -hmm. that was the impetus. I wanted a life. I wanted to be able to, you know, do more in less time. Yeah. Well, it's sort of interesting. I mean, it's it's like... Part of when I was reading the book, I was sort of thinking, okay, well, why why care so much at this stage of your career, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could you've been so successful, you could ride off into the sunset, be, be successful oh, by any you. measure. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 you know, well, what is it you're seeing that that said, okay, God, this is so urgent for me? Well, first of all, I am by nature, I am a problem solver. And I see sales challenges and I delve into them and I explore them and I figure out how to share what I learn with other people. That is what I do. I mean, I do it in my spare time. I can't not do it. Mm -hmm. But what I saw, you know, literally is, is that everybody I'm talking to is saying, oh my God, I'm just exhausted. I feel like I'm always at work. I mean, there's no escaping this thing anymore. It's just driving me crazy. You know, so that was on one hand, I was hearing it's a sales challenge. And again, you know, I like sales challenges. I hate them when they're mine, but I like other people's <laughs> challenges. <laughs> well, and, so, and so I knew that it was a huge issue. And I just wanted to say, too, you know, why else? Last year, I went to CEB's um, conference, the mm -hmm. Challenger mm -hmm. Sales People. Right. And, right. and they were sharing their information on the Challenger customer and what it took to sell to groups of people and how to mobilize different you know, mm -hmm. groups to get orders through. And, and I said to the two authors after the conference while we were talking, I said, hey, you guys, that was your latest research. What is your current research showing you? And they said, without a doubt, our new research is saying that sales rep overwhelm is the number one issue facing organizations today. 
and I wonder how much how much of that do you think is is generated by one of the other issues you really talk about in the book a lot, which is just the sort of we're in a different world now where there's nonstop distractions available to us. Yeah. And and given that that we're living digitally both in our personal lives and our in our professional lives, we have sort of this the seamlessness <laughs> between the two right. that that these distractions really feel like part of work almost to some degree. And as you said, it extends the day. It's like yeah. you're never off. Right. I mean, research is showing that smartphone caring professionals are working about 13.5 hours a day, or they're not working. They are connected to work doing something, whether it's reading emails or following up on something. 13 and a half hours a day. I mean, that is like mentally exhausting. And no human being in the world has the capacity to keep at that level of performance um, for any period of time. I mean, that's the reality. We are human creatures and our, and literally our brain is not able to spend that much time concentrating and doing our best work. And multitasking is really, it's a myth. I mean, it's, it's sort of funny. It's, it's, I was at a conference last week and uh, this guy was giving a really good presentation about sort of the multi-generational workforce. You know, now we have this unique situation. We've got these five generations in the workforce and we've got, you know, what he hesitated to call the millennials, but the millennials and one of the hallmarks was is they multitask. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they think they're multitasking, right? Right, right. I mean, there is no such thing. I mean, research shows if you go into brain si- science at all that the, the human brain is not capable of doing two things concurrently. What it does is it shifts and it goes, okay, I'm going to focus here, then I'm going to quick focus over there, then I'm going to go focus here again, and you go back and forth. And every time that you switch from one thing that you're working on to another thing, you actually slow everything down. Every task you're working on takes 20 to 40 percent longer. And there's and, here, and there's this okay. there's this time gap too, right? When you have to shift. I read mm-hmm. once that's like, you know, once you interrupt to go look, check your phone, for instance, and you go back to work, it takes like 30 seconds to a minute for your brain to get sort of recalibrate back to what you were doing. Right. I think um, some other research I read said that it takes 10 to 20 times the length of the interruption. To actually recover and and to be back where you were at. So say you were working on a proposal or you had a big presentation that you were working on with an upcoming client and you just went to check email. Of course, when you went to check email, what happened is you saw something that was interesting. You went down that rabbit hole and clicked on a link to something else. And then you were on LinkedIn because you thought of something while you were on there. And so you go to LinkedIn and you check out something and that leads to something else. And pretty soon you get back to your presentation that you were working on. You've gone maybe five or six different routes just because you wanted to check one email. And now you have to get your head back in gear and it maybe took you five minutes. So 10 times that, it, you know, think of the lost human productivity that we have just because we um, slide down into that world of distraction. And we live in it, and it's horrible. Yeah, I mean, you talk about saving an hour or two a day. I mean, you could just do the math and say, okay, you know, here yeah. we have, I think you have the statistic in there, you, average person checks their cell phone, what, 34 times a day or something like that? And, yeah. so, and so just, even if you assume it just took a minute to recover from every time you checked your cell phone. I know. You're talking about half an hour. There was there. Half that, an hour. That's yeah. almost that's you know a quarter of the the two hours you're trying to save or add to your day, if you will, yes. right. which is which is just amazing. So one of the things I really liked about the book is that you used your. I mean, I identify with so much of what you said in terms of the the pre the pre or the current Jill or before writing the book Jill is I yeah I get swept into those rabbit holes all the time. Is is so when you started looking at how to improve things, you really used yourself as the guinea pig to test all these things, which I thought was a lot of fun. So you became sort of like your your personal productivity test dummy, if you will. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I failed a lot of tests (laughs) along the way. Um, And I was really quite discouraged for a while because... I, um, it's not easy to change what you're doing. And I had to step back and recognize that, um, I had slowly over time developed these, these habits and these ways of working that were no longer serving me, but I didn't understand how to change things. And so, uh, of course, like everybody who's really distracted and really busy, the first thing I did is I just tried all these little sales hacks. You know, people say, well, if you do this, it'll save you a second a day, you know, or something. And I mean, you know, there's a hundred gazillion articles on sales hacks, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, 21 sales hacks to save you, you know, 21 minutes a day or whatever. Um, and I tried all those. And the reality of it is sales hacks save you many seconds, but they don't get to the root cause of 
of the issue and the root cause is how we're working is is actually not right. I mean, we have to literally change a lot of things. And um, I, I found that I personally did not have the willpower to um, be disciplined. In fact, I you'll laugh when I say this, but I, I, I really came to hate certain people. <laughs> <laughs> based on based on what they were writing about and how you could say no 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 I just hated those people who were able to be so blasted disciplined that they right. said yes from tomorrow I'm going to be organized and I'm going to do this and I'm going to get up at five thirty every morning I'm going to exercise for forty five minutes and I'm going to sit down you know do this mm-hmm, and that mm-hmm. and and they were so disciplined I just I hated them because I was not able to control it and I know I'm not supposed to do that but you know I just lack the willpower. And then, it, then my research shows that, the, you know, you're only given a bucket of willpower a day, you know, I mean, here's this bucket of willpower, Jill. And, and, you know, if you use it up ahead of time, you're going to run out. And what I found is that I was using it up ahead of time, because I kept le- allowing myself to, to, um, to be tempted away from what I was doing. And what I didn't realize is that every single decision we make, like for checking email or going to our emails, every email is a decision. And every decision we make wears out our brain. And if we're trying to resist it, here, you know, here I am trying to resist. Oh, don't go there, don't go there, Jill. And my brain is going, oh, God, this is hard work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and by, the, by, by 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, my willpower would be shot. And, and, and then I'd say, I'm a, such a failure. I, there's no way I can control this. And then I finally realized that I had to put a firewall around me with the distractions. The distractions themselves, the world that I lived in, and, and, and every seller lives in that world too. The online digital world is, is, is a, um, it's like you're swimming in a sea of temptation. You know, look here, click here, and savvy marketers are doing everything in their power to attract us away from our work. Yeah. And, and we fall victim to it because they're so good at what they do, and we are losing our, our working time. Well, it's, I think it's, it's tragic. Right. I think it's. I agree, and I think it's not. I would wouldn't put the the onus just on marketers. I think, yeah, you know, it's our our technology lives that we live. You know, yes. Facebook, for instance. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, it, it's it's amazing. I mean, I'm not as avid a Facebook user as as. 99% of the people out there, though yeah. I, I do, but, but, um, yeah, you think about it, you're a sales rep and, and you're checking between calls. Yes. I mean, think about how distracting that is when you then have to say, okay, I have to be focused on this customer when I'm calling yeah. them. Yeah. And, and this distraction, I think is a huge issue. You know, why, why don't, why aren't people asking good questions? Well, because they're not listening to the answers they're getting to the previous <laughs> question yeah. because they're distracted. So they don't yeah. know the next question to ask. I'll tell you, Andy, you know what really helped me to deal with this is when I finally understood that when I went online, uh, there's a part of my brain called the amygdala, which is the fight or flight response, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, that we all have. It's the ancient primitive part of our brain. But when you go online, the amygdala actually steps forward and it says, here, I got this brain because now I'm in a new world with all these things. And the amygdala's job is to go out and scan the horizon and go, is anything new out here? I'm watching for danger, you know? So Mm -hmm. it literally goes out there and looks for something new. Of course, there we are in our online world and we get a bing here and oh, here's a link there. And oh, here's a new update on Facebook, you know, and oh, let me check this. And, you know, that's our amygdala is doing its job in it in our body is literally rewarded for for um, noticing so every time we notice something we get a shot of dopamine dopamine is a feel-good hormone dopamine makes us want more so it's literally it becomes an addiction and you get twitchy if you can't you know i gotta check it out i gotta check it out (laughs) you know what i'm saying yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah, it it made perfect sense when i was reading the book as i said i was laughing because it's so right on point in so many respects. Yeah. So you created this, I wanted to spend some time talking about uh, your Time Master Manifesto, which you created this uh, avatar of yourself as, as the yeah. Time Master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and you had a manifesto you published, had a number of items on. I thought it'd be fun to go through some of these about, because I think some of them are really essential that, that really get overlooked in terms of managing time, being more productive at the time you have, starting with The importance of sleep. (laughs) Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Um, You know, you mentioned that I became the experiment. I became the sleep experiment, too. And I had always believed 
that I could do my job on six and a half hours of sleep. That, it, you know, that was mm-hmm. kind of maybe, you know, macho man or superwoman here um, saying I can get by on six and a half hours of sleep. But when I actually started testing my sleep, I found that there was a significant difference in my productivity the next day if I had a decent night's sleep. And for me, the personal, you know, time I needed to get at least seven and a half hours and then I could wake up in the morning and boom like the brain was there and I could move into gear and I could be really sharp anything less and it took me at least two hours to get my head in the game and be worth you know worth an ounce of gold hmm. but you hadn't been getting the seven and a half before no but you don't know how many hours I wasted you yeah. know, in the, I mean what am I trying to say I'm trying to say until I realized I had no idea how powerful sleep was and I know people are talking about it but until it became a personal experiment where I could literally track and see my differences it was fascinating to me but nobody realizes that because we just you know it just we sleep it's we, just what we do yeah, yeah we'd serve well especially I mean that's it's serve it's somewhat age related right I mean you're you know, think about all these masses of, of new salespeople that come into the sales force every year that I, mean, I remember my time at a similar age. We were, uh, you know, from six o'clock to sometimes well after midnight, we were, you know, in San Francisco having a good time. And no, then, well, I wasn't in San Francisco <laughs> doing that. So, you but, know, I mean, you know, went to work a little bit. In big you know. cities, you know, people had the yeah. distractions of big city. You know, yeah. Look at my son's generation, same thing. And, and, uh, yeah, I had one guy that worked for me that that uh, was manager of team one, and he was out till three o'clock every morning. Oh my god! And it lasted about a week. <laughs> yeah. And then he just like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Right. So even when I you're mean, young, you gotta you, you gotta pay attention to this. Well, you become a zombie. You know, I mean, you really are not performing at your peak level. And if you really want to do your work and get out and have a life, then you then you have to have all your mental capacities there. And that involves a lot of different things, including making sure that you have enough sleep. Everything else takes longer. Your willpower is less. By the way, you eat more with a lack of sleep. And Absolutely. you're less disciplined. You make fewer calls and you do worse on them. Mm. Exactly. All right. So the second thing, or number two on the list I want to talk about, not necessarily, not necessarily number two on yours was, you begin the day with what matters most. Yeah. So talk about that. Well, if I take a look at, can I do a comparison before and after? Sure. Okay. Like before I would do email triage first thing when I get up and I still do that just to to check, you know, and that's literally to go through my emails just on my cell phone and see if there's anything urgent and delete things that are irrelevant. But before, the first thing I did when I get to my office is I would open up and look at my email. And oftentimes, <laughs> an hour and a half later, <laughs> mm-hmm. maybe, maybe longer, um, I would go, oh, God, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been doing all this stuff. I've been busy, 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 busy. And, um, and now, well, now what do I need to get done today? And, and I'd actually used up a lot of my cognitive capacity, my ability to think and be as good, as sharp as I could. The reality is, is if you sit down quietly and you, ta- you, know, you say to yourself at the beginning of the day, before you turn on the blasted computer, even though you feel compelled to, and you're twitching and you're waiting for your dopamine hit, you know, to get going, you just sit quietly down and say, you know, honest to God, Joe, like, what are the most important things that you need to get done for it today? What are the most important things? You know, I mean, it could be I need to get a hold of a specific prospect. It could be that I need to follow up um, on a customer service issue with a big client. I mean, whatever it is, there are certain things that are key priority. And to just, when you come into the office to start those things, or at least one, to start the most important one early on, ensures that it's going to get done as opposed to you're going to run out of time at the end of the day, because you got so caught up in email that led to other people saying, Jill, can you get this? Jill, can you do that? Jill, can you do this? I mean, you know, you open email, and now you've entered everybody else's priority list, not your own. Not your own. And so you yeah. talk about you, you've divided your life into three buckets, basically. And so if it's not in one of the buckets, it's just, which are priorities, yeah. it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen, Right. And yet, and yet, it just doesn't happen. It, some things have to be done in the evenings. They just don't belong during the workday. Right. You know, you just have to really think, what is the most important thing for me to get done? You know, is it something related to, you know, a customer interfacing type of activity? Is it, 
something related to the research, you know, that you have to do in order to be, or the preparation you need to do in order to have a good customer interactions. I mean, those things are crucial. Yeah. And you, for me, I'm, I'm a doer as well. Cause as an entrepreneur, I have to, I have to actually deliver <laughs> the things that I get paid for. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. and you referenced two good books in that, when you're talking about that, uh, essentialism. Oh, love it. Which is a great book people should mm-hmm. read. And the one thing, the one thing is great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Both like some books on that. Mm-hmm. Um, Another thing that that you have in there that that seems sort of obvious on the surface of it, but it's it's an issue we see with salespeople all the time. I see with salespeople all the time, is you say I think about what I'm doing and why, <laughs> and it seems like so much of the way sales processes are evolving, they're so activity based and quantity based that people are just sort of little automatons, and you know you have to always stop and think about what you're doing. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I had a, a really good conversation with the VP of sales for um, for an organization, and, and they had a lot of the sales development reps who spend a lot of their day on the phone. And and I, I said to him, you know, I mean, these guys are, you know, they, and that's mostly guys in that mm-hmm. field. It's, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's call, 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 and it's a, a very... Um, yeah, testosterone-driven. Testosterone-driven environment. Yes. And, 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 you know, so I said, you know, what differentiates your top sellers from your average ones? He said, our top sellers, before they get on the phone for the day, they sit down and spend some time thinking about what needs to get done and why they're going to do it, you know? I mean, literally. Um, and that's important. Everybody needs to do it rather than just getting to work. I mean, work is, there's a lot of things we can do and we can walk away from our eight or 10 or 14 hours at work and we could have been busy the entire day, but busy about what, you know, did it matter? Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the issues that, that entraps people get stuck into with, again, with, Hey, we've got these you know, SDR teams. They have to make so many calls and so on is, yeah. is they don't stop and think about, well, maybe there's a better way to do this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, I know. <laughs> and that's that's what you're missing. And and I had this conversation with with SDRs and SDR managers. It's like, you know, you should as a manager, you should expect your people to think, push back, say, hey, there's a better way to do this. We've been in yeah. this process. We know. Even practice passive disobedience. I mean, sometimes if they've got a better way to do it and they just sort of passively disobey <laughs> or stick, you know, vary from the script, that's right. okay. Yeah, I, I honestly believe that one of the most important things we can do is to get people to experiment all the time. I mean, what we have right now is a, you know, in, in a lot of organizations, there is the process, there's the way that we do it. But who's to say it's the best way? And you say passive disobedience. I would really um, encourage people and create a um, like weekly challenge about challenges, but what can we do better? Mm-hmm. What can we do better? Let's take this particular thing and see if there's a way we can improve it. I mean, I'll just take something like the PowerPoint decks that a lot of people have, which, by the way, I think in most cases, and and I always see my clients' PowerPoints when I'm working with them, but in most cases, they pretty much suck, Andy. I mean, Mm -hmm. they're they're like Mm -hmm. like the reverse of what they should be. They're, let me tell you about my company and all the, you know, locations we have and how long we've been in business and who we were invented by. I mean, it's like all that bogus stuff that nobody gives a rip about, Mm -hmm. but that's their presentation and they do it religiously because this is our corporate deck, you know, the reality is they should be saying, you know, should we give a presentation? Yes or no. If we do, we need a deck. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Do we need a deck or can we just talk to people? That's an experiment. Maybe we could look at if we take the deck and we cut up, cut it in half Would that deliver better results and create better interactions. And to me, it's the, it's the challenging of the status quo at all times, consistently looking for the possibility that there's a better way to get to the end result. Exactly, exactly. So one other one of the the hints you had is working in blocks of time, and this is one <laughs> I I actually picked up a year ago and started using the the Pomodoro timer, and mm-hmm. it's been very useful for what I do. So why don't okay. you tell people about that? Well, research into um, productivity shows that um, you know you can get into a flow, and and the the rather than just working straight through to take a look and say, what am I doing that is similar to each other? And how can I group like activities together so that I will get 
you know, so I can be more proficient at them and get them done faster. And so literally, I mean, there's, there's a couple parts here, literally looking at your day and say, well, what do I have to do? So say you're prospecting today, rather than, um, just saying, okay, here's my list of people I want to call. Okay, I'm going to, here's, you know, here's uh, Eric's phone number. Uh, okay, let me check Eric out on LinkedIn. Let me go to his company's website. You know, okay, I'm, I'm going to call Eric. Okay, now I've, you know, he didn't answer. I'm going to enter that into my CRM. And, you know, I mean, for, there's Eric. And then we get to Jennifer. <laughs> She's the next person on our list. And we go back to that whole sequence. I'm going to look Jennifer up on LinkedIn. I'm going to do this. I'm going to check out their website. I'm going to think about what I'm going to say. And and one by one, we do this. I mean, the reality is, if we can say, okay, here's the 10 prospects I want to contact today. Let me do all my research at one time. You know, let me go on and look them all up and take some notes on each one of them. Now let me plan what I'm going to say or do to each person because I know something different. I'm not just going to do the standard call. I'm going to do some or email. I'm going to do something that is pulls it in. And now let me do my interactions. Let me call or let me send out my emails. That kind of stuff. You're, you're faster at your research and you're better at it. You're faster at your preparation and you're better at it. You're faster at doing the activity and better at it. Mm-hmm. So every bit of that block, you know, the blocking time for each, you know, type of activity allows you to get better at each one and condense the amount of time it takes. But I would say beyond that, we should be blocking the time on the calendar so it's actually there. This is my prospecting time or this is my research time. This is my planning, prepping the calls time or prepping the emails time. And this is my outreach time. And actually put it on your calendar because if it's there, then we are more likely to stick to what we're doing and do it well. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a great hint that came from, uh, I'd interviewed Kevin Cruz. I don't know if you read his book on time management, uh, which is a fabulous book. And yeah, his whole thing was his interviews with, like, there's long titles about time management secrets of you know billionaires and millionaires oh, yeah. and yeah. athletes and so on. Mm-hmm. And sort of the consensus among everybody I interviewed is that one of the key time management secrets of these people is they don't have a to-do list. They have a calendar. Yeah. And if yeah. it needs to get done, it goes into the calendar. Mm-hmm. It goes to the calendar and you put it there because if you don't have one in the calendar, it's easy for the day to disappear on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that, that's, that's been a powerful one for me in transforming what I do. So, mm. um, Jill, this is the segment of the show where I've got some standard questions I ask all my guests. And the first one is a hypothetical scenario, and in the scenario, you, Jill, have just been hired as the VP of sales by a company whose sales have stalled out, and the CEO and the board, they're anxious to hit the reset button and get things back on track. So what two things could you do your first week on the job that could have the biggest impact? Well, that's a toughie. Um, first week on the job, I certainly want to get my hands around what was going on. So I probably want to interview people to find out what is the state of the situation. But to have an impact, I, I think to me, one of the biggest things that you can do to have an impact is to capture the spirit of the people mm-hmm. and to engage them. In how can we make this better? And so I would want to um, do that right away. I'd want to say, look, you guys, you, you know, sales has stalled out. I know that sales has stalled out. We're here in this together. We're going to go on a massive experiment and we are going to be doing tons of things in the upcoming weeks. And I want it. I want every one of you to be a part of it. We are going to find better ways to do things. And we're going to test and experiment, test and experiment. And, you know, I want to get started on this right away. I would engage people. To me, that would be like the most important thing I could do. Get them enrolled. With what Get you're them gonna enrolled, do. and and it's not like they're bad people. It's like sales have stalled out. We got to find out why, but more importantly, we got to work together mm-hmm. to find better ways and share what we're learning, so we can all be lifted up at the same time. Love it, great answer. Okay, so now I got just a handful of actually four rapid fire questions. You can oh give my. me dear, one dear, word dear. answers, or <laughs> you can elaborate if you wish. These are these are. Uh, <laughs> These are pretty simple, but they maybe might cause you to think a little bit. So the first one is, when you, Jill Conrath, are out selling your services, what's your most powerful sales attribute? Wow. Um, I am so, when I'm selling my services and people contact me and they want to look at me to do work for them or somebody mm-hmm. else, the quality, the quality of my questions are probably my best attribute. Okay. 
great. They're they're penetrating. They're insightful. They make people think, and and then I get a lot of good information that I can then translate into what I share later. Excellent. Next one. Who's your sales role model? I honestly don't have one. I mean, I grew up with Neil Rackham as a sales mm-hmm. role model mm-hmm. back in the early days. That's good. But in terms of today, I think it's new territory, and um, I. I'm constantly creating. I don't look to anybody. I, I scan a lot of people mm-hmm. and I follow a lot of people because I pick and choose and find really good ideas from a lot of different people. I agree. Great. Um, all right. Other than any of your own books, what's one book you'd recommend every salesperson read? I have no doesn't idea. doesn't even need to be a sales book. I know. I still have no idea. Okay. We've had that. You've had that before? Oh, I've had that before. That's no problem. All right. I, so... I'm, yeah, so, they, I mean, I feel really dumb saying that, but I, you know, there's so many books out there. I think it depends on what you're selling, what what you need at any particular time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, last question. This is sometimes the toughie. Is what music is on your playlist right now? Nothing. Interesting. So, do you listen to podcasts or? I, I listen mean, to podcasts. I listen to radio. I listen to different things, but. Um, Music, I don't listen to specific music. I will turn on focus at will and let them give me music in order to help me focus when I'm working. But when I'm walking, I'm listening to podcasts and doing things like that. Hmm. So when you write, do you have music on? No, I actually listen to focus at will, which is an app. It's an app and it's a a focusing app and it actually plays music in the background um, while you're working that is designed to make you more productive. All right, that's going on my list. That's a good one. Focus at will. <laughs> yeah. Because yes, so we discussed write them. Write that one down. It is an app that, down, that I, I yeah, found. I'm, it. I'm yeah, you know, working on my next book, and I have my my music that I select. Uh, yeah, put me in the mood to write. But um, well, yeah. the neat thing about Focus at Will is that they have different kinds of music to even choose from. I mean, so there's the classical music, and there's acoustical music, and there's contemporary music, and there's like showroom, but you know. Um, Show tunes, Shows, and so. show tunes and stuff like that. So you can choose the genre that you like, but they've literally tested to find out which ones have a, a best chance of making you get more done and you know getting your thinking going better. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I've got my playlist that I have to sort of invokes like a Pavlovian response when the music no, starts. Doing, okay, well, that's cool. I start that writing. Yeah, I'm like, like, yeah. like a trained dog in that regard. Okay, so, well, that's great. So, Jill, thank you for being on the show today. Tell folks how they can find out more about you. Well, there's two things. Um, the first thing is that they can take my More Sales, Less Time Challenge, which is kind of fun. It's a seven-part series. And all they have to do to take that, uh, which does challenge their thinking and hopefully get some thinking about new ways to be more productive, all they have to do is to text 44144. That's 44. 44- one four four and text the message sales and boom they'll get a response and then they just send the email and then they'll get on the program and it'll roll out over the next couple of weeks so that's one way or they can go to my website jillconrath.com perfect perfect okay jill thank you for being on the show my and, pleasure yeah and friends remember thank you for taking time to join us today and make it a part of your day every day to deliberately learn something new to help you accelerate your success and easy way to do that is take a minute subscribe to this podcast accelerate That way you won't miss any of my conversations with top business experts like my guest today, Jill Conrath, who shared her expertise about how to accelerate the growth of your business. So thanks for joining me. And until next time, this is Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guest, visit my website at andypaul.com.